This, the Dalai Lama said that killing in the name of religion is unthinkable. Hey, thanks, Dalai Lama. I'm sure everybody will fucking listen to you. No one listens to the Dalai Lama. No, no one. <laughs> this guy's a real jerk. Why did the moron throw the clock out the window? Why? Because it reminded him of Richard Clock, the man convicted of knife raping his wife. Good God almighty. You know, <laughs> Jesus. It used to be sim All right. I'm sorry. I didn't know that one was coming. <laughs> This guy's a real jerk. I, I would guess that uh, one of the, the, the good things about this, you had some time off. Have you taken some vacation? Have you gone anywhere, traveled? Yeah, anywhere? yeah, I went. Uh, I wanted to get away from all the showbiz, crazy showbiz. Yeah. So I decided I'd go on a vacation, you know? Right. And I don't uh, uh, like to go to hotels because all my years of doing uh, my nightclub act, I, uh, was, I don't like hotels. Yeah. So I decide I'll go, you know, my buddy tells me, he goes, hey, you should go to one of them bed and breakfast. You ever hear tell them? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. The idea is you go there, it's a guy's house, and you live in his room, and then he, he makes some breakfast. Right. Very... <laughs> uh, yeah. It's a thumbnail. Yeah, you know? that's it, sure. So uh, I, I, I looked one up on the internet there, and I found one. I went to uh, Vancouver Island, Victoria, which oh, is beautiful. beautiful. Oh, my yeah. God. It's God's little country. And so I go there, and uh, uh, I, I, I look up my place where I'm supposed to go. I have it on a little piece of paper. And I knock on the door, right? And there's no answer. So I knock again, and there's still no answer. So finally, I look like in the window there, and there's an old man sleeping on a couch, you know? Yeah. So I bang on the door, ringing the doorbell, you know? So finally, I hear, like, hey, keep your pants on there, you know, from the inside. <laughs> and, he comes to the door, old guy, you know, but I'd say 80, 85 years old, oh, yeah. old Harold Delaney was his name. Harold Delaney? Yeah, nice enough gentleman, you know. And uh, so I get in there and I says, well, I better go to sleep. There's no one else there, you know. <laughs> like, I thought it would be like a whole bunch of people in different rooms, you know. Yeah. And it was just me. Yeah. So uh, I go up and I, I go to sleep and uh, I'm, I'm ready to go to sleep. And a knock comes on the door, right? Uh, uh, knock on, the, on mm -hmm. my bedroom door. Right. So uh, I figure, uh oh, old Harold Delaney wants to have sex with me there. You know? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> That's the first thought that went through your mind, huh? Well, I'm a young fella. <laughs> yeah, These but, days, yeah, anything not a bad goes. Looking guy, yeah, sure, yeah. Not, not a, Traveling uh, alone, why sure. not? Sure. And uh, uh, of course, that's not, I didn't come to Victoria to have sex with old Harold Delaney. <laughs> you know, I can introduce him sightseeing. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> so then I hear him. He goes, well, "You ought to play some Scrabble." Oh, Scrabble. Yeah. So I say, "Okay, that's good. Sure. I'll play some Scrabble." So I go down, and he pulls out this old Scrabble game there, and we start to play. You know, and I like mm. Scrabble. You know, so I get the first turn. You know, because I picked the lower letter, and so I get the first turn. So I make rabbit. You know, pretty good. It's a good word, and then, and then uh, I do it. I do it pretty quick. I take like a couple of minutes, and then old Harold Delaney, he takes like a half hour to like get his word, and the whole time he's not talking, he's not telling me old stories. Yeah. I like hearing old stories, you know. And instead, it was like for a half hour, it was just Harold Delaney going. <laughs> so then. So then after a half an hour of that, you know, I'm just sitting there, he comes up with his word, it's a uh, hat. <laughs> That's his word, yeah, <laughs> hat. So he puts it and he, he takes the, the word hat and then he puts it like way in the corner on that triple letter score, right. the triple word, the red one right. that you want to get to. Yeah, sure. But you can't just put it there. No, no, it's, it's got to have something, some relation to rabbit. Yeah. Yeah. You got to move up there, you know, <laughs> and finally get to there. But instead, he just puts it right there. Oh, no. Yeah. So uh, I go, all right, you know. <laughs> and uh, so then it's my turn, you know, I do something and uh, uh, quickly, and then again, the same thing, like, you know, and then time going by, and then every word, and I was coming up with good words, you know, I had a sleigh, you know, a sleigh oh, ride, yeah. and yeah. Uh, uh, avocado. Whoa. It was a seven-letter word. Yep. You get 50 extra points. I'm still way behind him. He's <laughs> just, just freelance on the board. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And so finally, I decided I'm going to, like, I got to say something, you sure. know? So he, and all his words were like cup and hat, and <laughs> I think it was just like things he'd see around the room, you know? And so 
I'm playing excellently. I should be in the lead, but instead I'm like a thousand points behind. And finally, I got, th I got to say something, you know? Mm. So he puts a boot, you know, up, uh, on, on this triple, and it really annoyed me because I was building towards sure. the triple yeah. letter. And he just puts boot. And uh, so I said, finally, I got to say something here. And I go, hey, uh, old Harold Delaney there. Uh, I, I don't know. I, you can't put boot, boot there. And then he goes, uh, you never heard tell of a boot? <laughs> I go, no, no, I know what a, a boot is. I'm just saying. You know, that your fella goes out there to wear a boot. So I go, no, I know what a I made avocado. I know a boot. You know? And it just took him forever. And I think, and also I noticed a weird thing. He had no, there were no blanks. You know, I, no, you had the, yeah. the blanks in the yeah, game, uh -huh. and it's always good to use any letter, sure, right? Yeah. I realized there's no blanks in this game. And I figured old Harold Delaney must have... Uh, when he got the game, figured, that the hell is that, you know, and throwing it away. <laughs> can't use it. Yeah. Now, how was, how was, the, uh, how was the breakfast? This is, uh, did you have the breakfast? There was no breakfast. <laughs> I got up the next day. I, I was so uh, hungry from playing Scrabble all night. <laughs> so he says, uh, hey, Harold, how you doing there? Uh, uh, how about some breakfast? And he goes, I've never been much for breakfast. <laughs> So I go, oh, all right. So I go, I, uh, I guess I'll go down to McDonald's and pick up uh, some breakfast or something, Harold. And he goes, can you get me an egg McMuffin? It's <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Uh, you know the funniest part of doing an office conga line? <laughs> when you look back and realize you're doing it alone and you're not in an office, you're in a psychiatric hospital. <laughs> I know the Bible says not to covet thy neighbor's wife. Right. But it doesn't say a damn thing about coveting thy neighbor's husband, especially a sweet, hot fucking asshole. <laughs> now listen, man, I like the news. You guys like the news? I always watch the news, and I'll tell you something about the news. I don't understand it. But it's for some reason I watch it. I don't even know why, but uh, I think I'm supposed to or something. So I'll watch it, and then the guy will come on, and he'll go, anyways, today the deficit. And I'll go, ah, ha, ha, I've heard that word. <laughs> and the guy goes, today the Na Dow Jones NASDAQ Composite Index is uh, down. And then I go, ah, that's not good. <laughs> down. Up! I like when it's up. <laughs> That's my opinion on the... <laughs> Seems like there's too much news, like, you know, because now they have 24-hour news. Now, when I was a young boy, the news was half a hour. That was the whole news, you know. And a guy would come on and he'd have a tie, you know, and shit, and he would say the news. And it was a half a hour long. Now, it's 24 hours long. Now, it turns out that back in the old days when it was only half an hour, they had it about right. That's about all the news there is. <laughs> Even then, there would always be like a story, some fucking story at the end about a caribou or some horse shit. So there wasn't even enough to fill the half an hour. But 24 hours, way too long. So they have to keep repeating stories all the time and everything, and uh, they'll make up stories, you know? They do that a lot, make up things that aren't really news stories, but they have to, you know, fill the 24 hours, you know? And the one I noticed that they make up a lot, uh, this is the latest one I've seen. I see this all the time on the news. The newsman will come on, he'll go, he'll go, good evening, everybody, this is the newsman, whatever he says, he's not gonna say that. <laughs> and he goes, our top story tonight, a lady has vanished. That's the story. And then he goes, let's go outside where there's another guy. So then they cut to outside. And then there's a guy outside and he's like, hey, listen, how's it going inside? We're outside and uh, we found out about this lady that vanished. Her name was Janice and uh, they found her car here in the Taco Bell parking lot. And uh, don't worry about the car, it's fine. But uh, can't find hiding her hair of the lady. Well, back to you. So, so then you're watching, you go, well, I don't give a fuck on account I never knew Janice in the first place.
Matter of fact, I'm kind of happy it's Janice and not somebody I know. <laughs> but then what they do is they start telling you about Janice, you know? And they go, hey, we got found out some cool things about Janice. And you're like, no, that's cool. I don't want to hear it. They go, no, no, you want to hear it. <laughs> they can't help themselves. So they go, let's go back to Bill. He's, uh, he's uh, still outside. And uh, how's it going, Bill? And Bill's like, it's all right. It's no inside, but it's cool. And uh, <laughs> anyways, we found out about Janice. Turns out she's a good lady. And uh, we found some friends of hers, and here they are. And then, sure enough, they show a lady, and it says, friend of Janice. And uh, she says, I'll tell you something about Janice. You want to hear about Janice? Janice is a type of lady that you could always turn to. You know, you ever want to turn to somebody? Like, if you got a problem or something, and you, you, know, you, know, you feel like you want to turn? <laughs> you ever do that? Or maybe your neck just hurts, and you want to anyways. The point of it is that once you had swiveled your head over this way, the person you'd most want to see in your eye line would be Janice. <laughs> and then they have Jan another friend of Janice that wasn't the first one. And she'd go, I'll tell you, Janice, oh my God, she was the type of lady that she could walk into a room and light up the whole room, you know? And she didn't have a fucking light or nothing like that. She would <laughs> just somehow through sheer tyranny of will, she could somehow <laughs> illuminate a room. I don't know. And that'd be Janice's third friend lady that's not one of the earlier two. And then she goes, I'll tell you about Janice. Is that who you're asking me about, Janice? <laughs> Janice was the type of lady that you could be talking to your best friend in a whole world. And then Janice come in and you go, fuck you, I'm talking to Janice. Because <laughs> Janice is better than you. Come on, let's face it. She's better than all of us. <laughs> so anyways, then you're at home and you start liking Janice, you know what I mean? You start getting invested in her, you go, God damn, that Janice is cool lady. I would, I would like to meet her one day. That would be a lot of, fuck, I forgot she vanished. <laughs> ah, just my luck. <laughs> They'll find her. Then you get hope. That's not good. I don't give a fuck what Obama says. Hope is never good. <laughs> don't try it. it. Never works out. <laughs> so you go, you go, oh man, they'll find Janice. They're putting pictures up of her on telephone poles. I think that had worked once. And, <laughs> and then the news keeps showing you more things about Janice, you know? And they'll show you like the video, home videos of her. You're like, God damn, look at that. She's eating a pizza. I like her hair like that. <laughs> They'll find her. And then you become obsessed with Janice. It's all you can think of, you know? You're at work, fucking just can't wait to get home, agonizing over Janice, you know, thinking about her with eating pizza and shit. And then you go home, and your nights are just uh, fevered dreams of, you know, Janice and bangs and shit like that. And, and you, all you can do is turn on the TV and hope and, you know, and then one day, you know, they go, hey, more news on Janice. Here's the Bill. He's still outside. And then Bill is like outside and he's like, here we are. Uh, where, as you can see behind me, they are scouring the woods. They're still searching for Janice, you know. And then you go, oh, fuck, not the woods. You know, that's not <laughs> Nothing good ever happens in the woods. <laughs> I've seen enough of these fucking stories to know that Janice ain't coming bounding out of the woods anytime soon. That's it. She's like, hey, what's going on, everybody? I, I'm just taking a stroll through the woods. What are you taking my picture for? I was just, just I just take a stroll through the scraggly woods. No, if they find you in the woods, they always find you in the same place. Every time, they will find you in a uh, shallow grave. <laughs> I don't know why they don't just look there in the first place. But... <laughs> That's... 
If I was the police chief, I'd go, listen, I want every shallow grave in the vicinity checked out. I want to clear out this case by Tuesday on account of, I'm running for DA or whatever. But, uh, doesn't shallow grave seem a mite rash? You know, if, like these serial killers are supposed to be so shrewd and cunning and everything, you know? At least according to the TV movies I've seen. And, uh, but then when it comes time for the grave, they get a little hasty, you know? They're like, there you go, three twigs and a leaf. That ought to do it. That doesn't look like Janice anymore. I don't recall Janice ever wearing three leaves and a twig. Oh, well. I guess I'll go home and await the authorities now. <laughs> you gotta prepare these things, you know? You gotta be a little smarter than that. You know, what I would do, and I would never, ever kill a lady in cold blood. <laughs> I wouldn't. I know I say that now, I don't really know. I, don't, I can't predict the future, but I don't believe. I, I know there's no river long enough doesn't contain a bend, but I believe that right now, and it might just be vanity, I don't think I would, uh, I would kill a woman in cold blood. But if I did, I would plan it out very carefully, you know, because there's a lot at stake. You know, you think about it, you probably, you know, probably lose your job. I don't know what happens. That's a blemish on the old CV, you know. Even in today's enlightened society, there remains a stigma to being a uh, psychosexual sadist. <laughs> but uh, what I would do is I would, like, I would look at the lady, I would select a lady, and then I would follow her habits. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I would watch her very carefully, you know? And I'd go, hey, I notice that every day she goes to that cheese sandwich shop, and then she comes out with a little paper bag. I'll bet you anything there's a cheese sandwiches in there. You know? So then I keep that in my head, you understand? Then I'd say, hey, I notice every Wednesday evening she goes with her other lady friends and they go down to the YWCA and they play basketball with each other, which is fine nowadays, you know? So what I would do is on Wednesday, I would go down to the YWCA and what would I be uh, holding in my right hand in the parking lot but a cheese sandwich. <laughs> so then she would eventually come out of the YWCA, you know, all sweaty with her, uh, you know, her ridiculous three-colored ball and everything there, you know, and <laughs> I'd be standing there. And then she'd go, hey, what's in your right hand? And I'd go, nothing? I'd be coy, you know? And she'd go, she'd go, there's something in your right hand. I'd go, listen, lady, who knows more about what's in their right hand? You or me? I'd believe, oh, this. Now, this is just a cheese sandwich. Why, you like them or something? What's... I got a whole fucking van full of them over there. Right over there. Yeah, yeah the, that craziest looking fucking van you ever saw? That's filled with cheese sandwiches. You don't have to have cheese sandwiches in the van, by the way. If you, um, unless you want to be known for your detailed work. It's not, it's not really necessary. Then, I would get the lady in the van and I would drive her to a remote area. An area most known for its remoteness. That's what I would look for. <laughs> and anyways, I'd take her to the remote area where I had constructed a shed. And then I would get her in there and I would do that thing that makes me feel like God. And, uh, <laughs> and then her screams would just bounce off the walls and echo out into nowhere and never touch the ear of civilized man again. And then I would take her body to the woods and bury her in a very, very, very deep grave. This guy's a real jerk.